Welcome to the FreeNAS YouTube channel. In this video, we're going to talk about installing and managing plugins in FreeNAS. The FreeNAS web interface makes it easy to install and manage plugins. Plugins are application add-ons that provide extra functionality to your FreeNAS system. Over two dozen plugins are available to choose from, providing services like backups, file syncing, media streaming, bug tracking, code management, and more. A plugin is a self-contained application running inside a type of container known as a FreeBSD jail. You can think of a jail as a small, self-contained operating system that provides a layer of separation between an installed application and your storage disks. Applications running inside the container cannot directly change anything on the core FreeNAS system. However, you can configure access permissions to a specified folder, known as a dataset, if the application needs to read or write data stored on the FreeNAS system. Now before installing a plugin, you want to make sure that a storage pool has been created first. You can create a pool by going to Storage and then Pools, then selecting Create Pool. In this example, we've already created the pool. If you forget this step, you will see an error message reminding you to create a pool first. Next, double check that you can ping an internet address such as google.com. If you cannot, go to Network, then Global Configuration, and add the IP address of your network's default gateway and name server. If you're not sure which name server to use, try a public DNS server such as 8.8.8.8. .8 .8 .8. If you still cannot ping, double check that there isn't a firewall blocking traffic on your network. Since installing a plugin requires a working internet connection on the FreeNAS system, verifying your network setup ahead of time will save frustration later. Each plugin will have its own IP address that is different from the IP address of the FreeNAS system. This means that you must decide whether to have a DHCP server dynamically provide an IP address or to statically assign an IP address that matches your network and which won't be used by any other computer or plugin on your network. Once you have a pool and a working internet connection, finding and installing plugins is easy. You can view available or already installed plugins by clicking plugins from the left hand menu. To install a plugin, click the three dots on the right column and click install. I'll try out the Plex Media Server plugin. By default, the installer will prompt to use a DHCP address. If you have instead decided to use a static IP, unset the DHCP checkbox, select the interface from the drop down menu, and type in the IP address in Netmask. To start the installation, click Save. Now, depending on the size of the application and the speed of your internet connection, the plugin will take a few minutes to install. Be patient as the installer will abort if you interrupt the installation, meaning you will have to start the installation over again. You will know that the installation is finished when the installer displays a pop-up message indicating the installation is complete. Don't just close this pop-up message without reading it though. Many plugins contain important configuration hints and tips in their pop-up message. Take the time to record any useful information in case you want to refer back to it later. The successful install message will also provide the IP address to access and configure the plugin. The installed plugin will now appear on the installed page under Plugins which lists each installed plugin, its status, IP, version, and release information. On this screen, you can also access and manage plugins that provide a web UI by clicking the three dots and then Management. If the plugin does not have a web UI, it can be managed from the command line by going to Jails, selecting the plugin's name, clicking the three dots, and selecting Shell from the menu. Once you've installed a plugin, it should automatically run or start. You can verify that by clicking the three dots on the right side of the installed plugin on the same page under Installed Plugins. If it lists Stop, it means the plugin is already running. To run the plugin again, simply click the three dots on the right and click Start. The checkbox to the left of the plugin's name will also enable batch operations, allowing you to start, stop, or delete multiple plugins in that list. If the plugin does not start, try refreshing the FreeNAS GUI or restarting your machine. If that doesn't work, you may need to reinstall the plugin by deleting it from the Available section under Plugins, and then installing it again. If you go to the Jails page, you will see that a jail was automatically created for that plugin. Click the three dots to access other options such as the shell, which can be used to test the configuration. For our next videos, we'll explain in more depth how to individually set up some of these plugins on your FreeNAS system. 
Several of these plugins will require setting up a mount point for your jail and accessing and transferring files via a share. For detailed documentation of plugins, make sure to head over to the documentation on ixsystems.com. We'll have the link below. Thanks for watching. FreeNAS is the open source community edition of the iX Systems TrueNAS product family, a comprehensive line of powerful unified storage products for organizations of all sizes. With its flash based architecture, powerful ZFS file system, and award winning support, TrueNAS Systems provides secure, scalable, and flexible high performance storage for virtually any application and budget. To learn more about the TrueNAS product family from iX Systems, visit us on the web at ixsystems.com.